Armchair and Lovejoy moments away. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Simple Grow has the product for you and your plants. Are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you are getting 100% worm castings, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow all natural, odor free worm castings. There's only one ingredient worm castings. So chemicals or additives will seep into your food and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. You can order by the ton, truckload, bag, or bundle. You can check out what Simple Grow 100% worm castings can do for your plants. And order today at simplegrow.com. Well, Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline, sponsored by Proclamation, brought to you by Proclamation Goods, and bring in our guest for this week. Sharon Lovejoy is a well written author of both fiction and nonfiction, an illustrator, gardener, and has been on many television shows, radio shows, and podcasts. Welcome to the program, Sharon. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day, not only to educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And I'll, I'll get started with this. You Clearly, with all your books that you've written, you, you are a passionate gardener. You love gardening. And we enjoy gardening with our nieces and nephews. What are some unique and extra fun things you can do to get kids into the garden? Well, you know, one of the most important things I think, Joey, is don't ever say let's go work in the garden because that's a sure way to turn a child against gardening. And so I will always go say let's go see what's going on in the garden. And my grands love it. We taste our way through the garden, edible flowers, uh, peas that are in bloom. And we take, and it's my first gift that I give children, a good magnifying glass and a stethoscope. And the magnifying glass, it brings the world into macroscopic uh, view. So kids can see the little things, the ants that are, that are milking the aphids and they can see that, you know, they, they just, they get an up close and personal view that's not possible just going out and running through the garden. So I like to take time for those little things and that gets them excited. And I think also, Propagating is exciting and starting seeds. Oh my gosh. It's so wonderful to have kids start seeds and to go through that whole process and to be able to see what they planted, that it has life and it's their baby. And it's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Explain what the stethoscope uh, is used for, for the kids. (laughs) Well, um, I can't remember how I first started using it, but you have to um, be careful not to move it around a lot when you put it on a plant and you can't be by a river stream or the ocean or a busy road, but you lay the stethoscope right onto the stem of the plant. And I had some of my best luck with tomatoes and pumpkins, things that are growing so that children can hear what's going on inside the plant. And it is an amazing experience. And on a tree, sometimes you hear things chewing on the tree or tapping on the tree or uh, woodpecker um, on things like cucumbers and tomatoes and pumpkins. You know how your stomach sounds when you have a big, big helping of beans? (laughs) You can actually hear the pumpkins talking to you. And it is so amazing. I've had some doubting Thomases who said, oh, I don't believe that. And then they go out in the field and they listen to the tomatoes on the vine or the pumpkin and their children too. It's, it's pretty exciting. And it teaches kids that these are beings as well. They're beings that deserve respect. And when I was teaching in Cincinnati inner city schools, the kids ended up writing me a letter and saying, we, we talked to 13 trees and these are their voices. And they told me, you know, willow is a slurper. <laughs> And red buds sounds like fairies, pink, 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 and just you know, getting the kids involved that way, so they realize that they're dealing with living, growing things. It's so important. That's fantastic. So, just like many of us, we all have a history of gardening. How we got into it? How did you get your right. start in gardening? And was it were you an adult? Were you younger? And what inspired that gardening interest? Well, my grandmother loved joy was a botanist and she belonged to different plant societies and she grew 
many different fruit trees, many berries, all kinds. She belonged to the Iris Society and the Gladiolus, you know, all these different groups. And uh, my parents had lived with my grandmother, Lovejoy, and then built a tiny little redwood cottage in under the apricot trees. So every morning in my life until I was seven, I would go out into the garden, which was a incredible garden, and my grandmother and I would interact. We'd talk to the plants. We had hollyhocks. We had boysenberries. We had uh, blueberries. We had apricots, guavas, fig, you know, you name it. And the funny thing is, now I virtually have that same garden here at home. It's as though she planted those seeds inside me, and they're growing here. It's just very much my childhood garden here now. So, you know, whatever we do with children, if we take time and we are, you know, we don't do parallel time, we do interactive time. We weave ourselves into the children's time and we listen to them. That changes their lives forever. And that's what my grandmother Lovejoy did for me. And I started first growing things in um, cans tomato cans and things like that and um, I had all sorts of things from pine trees acorns we, we tried everything um, beans uh, potatoes and we grew a lot of them in containers because it was just easier for me to deal with a small space and I say you know when you're working with children start small because you don't want them to be overwhelmed and I and, you know, it's changed my life. I mean, it, here I am, a grown-up, sort of, I guess. <laughs> and, and as much as any gardener who loves gardening can ever be a grown-up, because there's that child inside of us that just shines when we're talking about our garden or in our garden. And that's what my grandmother gave me. And it's a gift that I've passed on to my son, who's a fabulous gardener, fabulous gardener, my daughter-in-law, and my grandchildren, and they go into the garden, and they'll stop at a pineapple guava and say, look, we can eat these, and they'll pick off the, the blooms. Um, they know that borage tastes like cucumbers. They know that they can do rose petals. They know that nothing here has any poisons on it. So they, you know, they've already started interacting with the garden just as I did. So I hope I'm giving them a gift of, that's a lifetime gift, and I really hope that they carry it with them the way my son has. Well, your grandmother and you created memories, and then you've created memories with your son and your grandchildren. That's right. That's, you know, that would make her happy. She's smiling at me from up above, I hope, so she knows that it's been it's been carried on. So it's a, it's a wonderful gift to give children. Now let's talk about vermicomposting, the, the process of composting with worms. What are your best tips for vermicomposting, and what is something that you would avoid in regards to the process of vermicomposting? Well, first of all, no meat, or you'll get a terrible crop, and I won't even mention the M word, but you'll get them because the flies smell the meat and they lay their eggs on there. So no meat. Um, a lot of people say no dairy products, but I've had no problems with dairy products. The, um, the, the girls, I call them my girls, even though we know they're not girls, um, the girls don't like avocados. Uh, they like the interior of the avocados, but they don't want the pits or the skins. They don't like um, husks of corn or corn cobs, but they pretty much take care. We don't have a garbage disposal, and they pretty much take care of all our garbage. And we eat virtually every meal at home, and we, we have company. And, you know, we can handle many pounds of garbage a week. In fact, I don't even understand why city people that pick up garbage don't have vermicomposting going on. It's just so easy. You know, the and then the main thing is you have to keep them wet because they, they want to be able to slip in and out of the garbage and they just do such a great job. And then their tea is wonderful and their castings are like gold for the garden. Just wonderful. Fantastic. So we are talking with Sharon Lovejoy, a well written author of both fiction, nonfiction and um and and more. So you have a really great and natural tip on how to catch slugs. Tell us more about that. 
Well, it's so funny because I was t- told the tr- the trick of the grapefruit rind, and that sounds weird, but I do things like I put out a wet long board for the slugs to go under. I put containers on their side with wet newspaper in them, but I've had the best luck. And it was funny because when I wrote Trowel and Air, my editor said, this can't possibly work. Well, I had written about it in a magazine article, and a, young, a little girl sent me a picture of the before of a grapefruit rind and then the after. And it was just packed with slugs. Oh, my gosh. It really (laughs) works. I put a damp um, grapefruit that's already, you know, you eat the the insides out. I put it upside down in a damp area of the garden, um, not right side up because they like to hide underneath them. And in the morning, I get up and there'll be 20 or 30 slugs in there and I scrape them into warm soapy water. And then I add them to the, you know, take them out of the water and add them to the worm bin. They're gone by that time. So they are, um, they, for some reason, they love grapefruit. <laughs> and they don't, it doesn't work with oranges. It doesn't work with anything else. I've tried it, all other citrus, and only the grapefruit work for me. I don't know what that magic thing is that they love about grapefruit, but it works. Interesting. <laughs> People are often scared of spiders in their garden. They think, well, I got to get rid of them, but they're really no. good for the garden. And why are they so beneficial for your garden? Well, some scientists feel that they do about 80% of the pest control in the garden. And, um, you know, other than what the birds do and what the lizards might do, um, they eat grubs, they eat larvae, they eat, they catch, believe it or not, mosquitoes, they, they catch other spiders. They are the beneficial predators in a garden. I'm, I'm not afraid of them. I mean, I don't want to curl up in bed and sleep with one, but they, I watch them in the garden. I've had to watch them because I've been drawing them and studying them and, they're just an amazing, amazing predator in the garden. So they're taking out the things you don't want. They may get an occasional spider, but they are beneficial to us, and we need to protect them, and we need to not spray them or kill them and let them do their thing, and that's all part of a good, balanced, and well-nourished garden, and that's what you want, right? You want, you want things to be sort of balanced, and that's what they do. Definitely. So we really enjoyed having you on the program. How can people find out more about you? Well, I, I'm on, um, I, you can get on my website, and that's SharonLoveJoy.com. That's easy. <laughs> Instagram is just Sharon Lovejoy Author, and Facebook is Sharon Lovejoy or Sharon Lovejoy Homes Gardens Books. And um, I try to post faithfully on Instagram and give garden tips and and do different things to get people excited about the natural world around them. Get them away from the television. Absolutely. And if you're looking for some good books to look at, read, and help your garden grow better, Sharon Lovejoy has those books available at her <laughs> website. Very A lot of great knowledge there. Thank you. And we thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and our listeners and educating all of us. We thank you for that, Sharon. Thank you. Keep on doing what you're doing. We appreciate that. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.